Okay, hello. Um, in this video, we're going to be covering uh, pointers in C++. So, um, we're only, I'm only going to be covering, I'm not going to be covering dynamic memory allocation yet. We'll do that in another video. So, I'm only looking at, um, in this video, how you declare pointer variables um, and then how you use them. So, how you dereference them and, and how you point them to things in memory. Uh, and then I'm actually going to look at, at uh, where variables are actually useful. So when you combine them with classes and structs, you can use them to, cr to create more complex data structures, okay? So uh, before I jump to the code here, um, pointers, I know, uh, is often a, a complex topic, uh, is, is a tough topic for many students. Um, so, I mean, th the first thing to remember about pointers is that a pointer is just something that holds a memory address, okay? So that's the way I think of a pointer. It's it, What goes into a pointer is a memory address. Now that memory address references something. It references some data of a particular type. But then when you have that memory address, it's, it's pointing to, it's referencing some, some memory. So then you can use the address, you can dereference the address, as we call it, uh, to go to that memory and do something with it, to, to read it out or to actually change it, okay? So that's what a pointer is. So, so let's look at declaring a pointer in C. Let me, let me build this, make sure it's building still, and run it here to this first breakpoint. Um, so at its simplest, the syntax for creating a, a pointer variable is like this. So, so you notice we have the, uh, the star. So it, in addition to meaning multiplication in C, um, uh, the, the star is used for uh, 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 for, for defining pointers here, okay? So when you see this, I mean, this P is not a regular integer. P is a pointer. P holds a memory, uh, an address in memory, or, or it will hold an address in memory once we initialize it, okay? Um, now, I mean, pointer, yeah, so, you know, we're not, we don't use a, a pointer keyword or anything. It's, we simply use the star to change it from a regular variable into a pointer variable. Um, so you can have pointer variables of any type, so we can have, we can create something that points to a character. Um, and, uh, oh, a quick style note, um, this doesn't do, might not be doing what you think it does. Uh, th this is why it can be a bit dangerous to have the star next, I prefer having the, the star indicating a pointer next to the, the type. Uh, but if you do that, the way I prefer, and if you try to define multiple variables on the same line, multiple pointer variables on the same line, it won't actually, so X will be a pointer variable, but Y will just be a regular integer, which is problematic. So the, the textbook, and, and, and you'll see a lot of people use this style, where you put the, the star next to, to, the left hand, to the left of each variable. Um, I, I prefer, because whenever I see this, I read this as a character pointer. So instead of a regular character, this is a character pointer, a car pointer, or, or this is an integer pointer. So I, I kind of like to have, have the star next to the, the type name. So, um, and again, since it's my class, I'll probably be asking you to use my style for programs you do for my class. Uh, so I, I instead to pref I, I prefer to have all pointer variables on their own line when you're declaring them. So I have an integer pointer x and an integer pointer y, right? So, so this will work the way that we expect, okay? In general, for the, the style for this class, all variables should be defined on their own line instead of having multiple definitions, usually. So, um, so anyway, so, so that was a couple of different uh, pointer variables. I mean, you know, any type, you, you can have any type. So I can have a pointer to a float or a double. So on, okay. Uh, but yeah, let me let me go ahead and step over all those um, definitions. Um, let, let's go down to actually looking at actually using a pointer variable. So there's another example. So we're going to create an integer called my int, um, and we create another pointer uh, called ptr int, pointer to int. Okay. Here's another style thing. So I, I might not have this in my class style guidelines, but most places they're doing C or C++ programming, if they're using pointers a lot, they'll specify that all pointer variables have to start or end with some particular uh, suffix or prefix, okay? So I prefer to use a prefix of PTR. So all pointer variables I usually create are PTR something. 
So in this case, pointer to int. Oh, um, and here's our first example then of something besides declaring a pointer variable. Um, we're going to point uh, pointer int to my int. So the ampersand is referred to as the addressing or the address of operator. So when you do ampersand something, it, it gives you the address of. So like I said, pointers hold addresses. The ampersand finds the address. So, so whatever the address of my integer is in memory, it'll find that address and it will um, put that address into the pointer int. Okay, so let me, let me visualize that. I had a little um, a figure just for that. So um, if we have my int define and a pointer, um, an integer pointer type that we point to my int, it looks something like this. My int is an integer. So it actually, um, uh, integers take 32 bits or four bytes of memory. So if you, look, if, if you went out and looked in your computer memory, um, um, you would find, like, like my int might have been um, assigned memory, say, starting at hexadecimal address 2000 in your computer, okay? And since integers need four bytes, every memory address in typically in your computer memory holds eight bits or one byte of information. So um, if uh, my int um, uh, was assigned memory starting at, at, at 2000 in computer memory, it would, it would actually be using the addresses 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. And I didn't show, I meant to show this being initialized. If you initialize my int to 1, uh, since uh, if this was like an Intel, it, it depends on your, your CPU, your processor. If this was an Intel that uses little Indian, the, the, the least significant bits would, would come at the, the lowest uh, memory address. So, so if we assign 1 to my int, you would get 1 here um, at address 2000 and then zeros at the others, okay? So then, the, the, I mean, back to pointers. So it, if, if we assigned my, the address of my int to pointer int, memory address 2000 would just get saved into whatever, you know, the, wherever pointer int is in memory, okay? So you, so you get 2000. So basically, I mean, that, that's the way a pointer works. It's a memory address, and then if we dereference this memory address 2000, we go back to what it's pointing to, the, this value in memory here, okay? So um, let's show that. Um, although let me stop because uh, I want to initialize that to one. I, I'm going to show you something real quickly on the debugger here. Uh, we'll stop the debugger. Uh, re set a breakpoint right there. Rebuild. Actually, I'm going to breakpoint right here. And uh, let's run it back to that point again. Okay, continue on. There we are. So, so we, we've declared our two variables, my int and pointer int. Um, and um, uh, we're about to sign. I, I need to do one more thing. Sorry. So um, um, I wanted to also output the memory address. Like that, uh, and I'll also just you know show. I mean, in fact, if we print out the the value that's in pointer int, you, we will see that it is uh, in fact a memory address. So notice I'm not dereferencing them. I'm skipping ahead here. Um, I didn't I didn't talk about dereferencing. Well, I mean I did. So we're doing the same thing here. Um, so when you use the, uh, not, not uh, I'm sorry, we're not dereferencing, we're, we're getting the address of. So when we get the address of, I use it here when I was initializing pointer int, but you can use this ampersand, the address of, um, uh, in expressions and other places. So I just did it again here. I got the address of my int and we'll print it out, okay? Okay. Um, So now I think I'm ready so, uh, to, to, do, to illustrate what I wanted to. So let's rebuild that and run it down to that point. Continue on from the top here. So now, now we're here. Um, so now we look at uh, the output here of um, 
the the um, these three statements that we just executed. Okay, so my int does have a value of one. So so we see that that that's the actual integer value that's in my int. Now, if you look at the the ampersand from the first line here, you get this actually a hexadecimal address here, 0055. This is the memory address. So instead of memory address, hexadecimal address 2000, my int was actually allocated memory, four bytes of memory starting at 0055 FB38. And indeed, if you if you don't dereference pointer int, if you just look at what is actually in pointer int, it is that memory address, 55 uh, BF8. Okay. And then real quickly, um, uh, let me copy that. Um, so in Visual Studio, you can actually look at uh, get raw memory. So you can look down at the bits and bytes in raw memory. So I could actually uh, paste in that memory address. Uh, I don't know if you have to put the 0x in front or not, but, but look at it here. So there again, you know, so it, instead of laid, laid out in a column, you know, it's laid out in rows. But look at these four bytes right at memory address. 55FB38, 1000, like I showed on the slide. Because we assigned one in there, this is a little inning machine, so these the, the next four bytes, the, the least significant uh, uh, two bytes, of, or the least significant byte of my four bytes representing this integer ended up at that address, and then we had the next four there. All right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't normally debug, look at memory, raw memory like that, but, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tool that you can do there. So, continuing on then, um, so, I mean, so that, that's, that's the basics. So, we, we've defined a, uh, a pointer variable called pointer int, and we pointed it to my int, okay? So, let's see how you can use that. Um, so, here we'll define another integer called another int. Um, oh, I didn't mean to hit restart there. So, so let's get there. I meant to step. I'll step over. Um, oh, um, yeah, so um, this was actually th this line here that I just executed was our first example of dereferencing a variable. Okay, so you use the star to declare a variable of, of type pointer, but you also use it to dereference. Okay, so if you've got something that holds a memory address, if you put a star in front of it, so if you've got something that's a pointer, putting a star in front of it doesn't give you the, the memory address, it dereferences it. So it follows where that's pointing to memory and, you, and accesses the actual value. So in this case, we access the, the you know, it's pointing to my end, which has the value 1. So we would pull one out of memory and we would display it on C out, like here, like you see. Okay, so that's the, those are the two fundamental operations. So creating a pointer variable and then using address of to uh, to make a memory uh, reference or to find a memory address, and then using a star to dereference a memory address. Okay. Um, so some other things you could do with pointer variables. So uh, if I create another integer, um, I can create um, I can um, I can point uh, pointers to to other things. So here we're gonna instead of we're gonna point it to this new integer, another int. Uh, oh shoot, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong thing there. I keep hitting um, restart, not what I want to do. <laughs> so I should be using my keyboard uh, shortcuts uh, here. Let me restart again. Um, So let me do use F10, step over here. Um, so if we create uh, another int, and we assign 42 to it, um, and we point pointer int to that. Now if we dereference pointer int, it's, remember, I mean, my int has 1, another int has 42. So if we dereference de pointer int now, it should be pointing to this 42 value. So we should see 42 come out uh, here on our... Um, C out on our terminal output. Um, okay, now uh, you can use the the dereference the star for more than just uh, reading values. You can actually also use it to write values. Okay, so if you use star pointer int, so so dereference my pointer int, but you use it on the left hand side of an assignment. 
I can assign a new value to whatever pointer it is pointing to. So here we're going to stick negative 42 into another int, since, since pointer int is currently pointing to another int. So negative 42 will go into uh, another int. So, and, and again, this is just proving, you know. So uh, after we did that, I mean, my int st still has the value 1, because pointer int isn't pointing to it. An another, another int um, has the value negative 42, because another int is what pointer int is pointing to. So negative 42 is another int, or if you dereference pointer int, they're both pointing to that same value, negative 42. All right. So that's the basics of pointers. Um, so you can have two pointers pointing to the same thing. So if I create another pointer called pointer also int, and if I point it uh, um, to the same thing, so here I didn't use the address of. I just simply assign whatever point, whatever the address is that pointer int has. I assign that address to pointer also int. So now both of these are pointing to the same thing. And now, so if I assign a value, both um, pointer int and pointer also int are, are they're, they're pointing to another int. So all three of those things should have the value negative or the value nine 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 in them now. If we look at them, so so they all have nine 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 nine. All right. Um, so, and I already covered these. I I should have moved this code up to where I did this. So, to talking about the address of, um, and actually looking at um, um, uh, uh, memory uh, where where my int is. So uh, and one final thing. So uh, if you ever want to know what the size is of a particular data type in C or C++, you can use the size of function. So indeed, for example, if we look at the size of an integer, my int is an integer value, it comes out as being four. So uh, that means that it takes four um, bytes, or you know, since a byte is eight bits, 32 bits. Each integer uses 32 bits of memory, or four bytes of memory. So, All right. Um, now, I mean, you know, everything I just did here using pointers to integers was really just for illustration purposes. I mean, you almost never do things like that. Point setting up a pointer to a simple data type in C, like a character or a, um, I mean, or an integer or something like that. So, I mean, where, where pointers are really uh, useful is when you start pointing them to classes and structures. Um, so you can use this to build more complex uh, data types in C and C++. So let, let, let's look at an example of it. Um, so if I have a, a structure, um, I can create a pointer to uh, a user-defined data type, like a structure or a class, just like we can create a pointer to a simple type, like an integer or character. So in this example uh, file, I've got a structure called student type um, defined up at the top. It's a simple record, um, so student type is a user-defined uh, structure, user-defined type that has four member fields, name, campus word ID, uh, GPA, and grade, all of different uh, types. I'll come back to this later. Um, so, if we create a variable of type student type, Um, and then we can create a pointer to student type variable. So here, this is saying that I'm, I'm creating not a simple variable of type student type, but a pointer to a student type variable. And at the same time, when I create the, the, the pointer, I point it to this variable that we just created, um, student variable. Okay, so pointer student is pointing to student. <coughs> so as you remember from a previous lecture, for structure, the student structure, if I want to access a member of the structure, like the, the name field, the name member, I can use the dot to access it. So name was a string, so I could assign like a string to it. Uh, now I could use my pointer in the same way. So if I dereference the pointer and use the dot, um, I could assign a value to that. So notice we have to use parentheses around here because um, the, the dot operator has higher precedence than the dereference operator. The, the textbook uh, explains this as well. So if you didn't have the parentheses, um, I'm going to type that in there, but if you didn't have the parentheses, it would try to first find a member in pointer student, 
which is a pointer variable. It's not a student type variable. So it wouldn't work. So you do have to have a parenthesis if you do it like this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that should have had the effect of, of assigning this value to the, the campus-wide ID. Now, um, dereferencing a, a pointer to some kind of a structure or a class and then accessing uh, a member field is so common that a special operator is defined in C and C++ for doing both of those at the same time. That's what this little arrow, a dash uh, right arrow, uh, uh, is in C++. Okay, So this does exactly the same thing that I did in the previous step. Um, so this does both the dereference, so it finds out what pointer student is pointing to, and then it accesses the GPA um, uh, member field. In this case, we access that member field to assign it a value, 3.8. Likewise, so again, a, a second example of, of, of this. We um, um, dereference the, what pointer student is pointing to, access the grade field, and assign it a character grade of A here. Um, and then um, we can, uh, we've got a little helper function. Again, if you look at the top right under that, uh, this helper function takes uh, a reference to a student as input. Um, and well, we're just, we're just printing out the fields of, of that. Actually, we're, we're creating a string of the fields and printing those out there. So um, if we go back here, uh, we should see that it outputs. The, the, the point of this was to show that all of these assignments work, whether we did it using the original uh, uh, structure uh, for the name or whether we used our pointer to the structure, dereferencing it like this, or used this, this uh, um, arrow operator to simultaneously dereference and access the, the, the two fields. So we, we assign all four of our field values uh, in the same location memory. So all of these are referencing the same location, the same memory that was allocated when, when we created the student variable of type, student type, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> um, it is equivalent, um, so I could have also called toString by by passing it uh, the dereferenced value of pointer student, okay? So this does the same thing here. So I should get the same output. Okay. So. All right, um, and um, the um, arrow operator um, works also on classes as well as structs. So remember that structs and classes are essentially the same thing in C++. The only difference is the default, uh, whether things are private or public, for member items that you add to the class or the struct. Okay, so but typically for a class, um, um, ver member variables are defined as private, so you can't directly access member variables. But what are usually public for classes are functions, so so member functions of classes. Okay. So in this example code, I gave another uh, um, uh, version of student type, and in this case, a, a class. Let me go up um, and uh, look at the, uh, the the class version of the student type. So if you look in there, there there's a, another, I had to give it a slightly different name, so I call it student type class instead of student type. Maybe I should have called the first one student type struct, just to be clear. But in, in the class version of this record, uh, we've got the same four fields but uh, we declared these private, okay? So even if I wanted to, if I tried to uh, access these member fields, um, you would get an error message that they're private. Uh, but we defined a couple of functions in order to getter and setter functions so we could set. I only defined setter and getter functions to set the name here, just, just to illustrate. Um, although there is a constructor. So there's a constructor where you can pass in all four of the parameters and it'll initialize all of them. And then there's a setter and a getter for the name function. Uh, and then there's also a version of toString for the class to convert the, the instance of the class to a string here. So, um, so if we create uh, one of these student type classes using our constructor where we initialize all the values to these thing to, to these values, Joe Mo, and then the campus wide ID, and then the GPA, and then the um, the, the letter grade. Uh, now, so again, you know, we can create a, a, a pointer to a student class type. Uh, I, 
I didn't use the my, my style there. So we can create create a pointer to another student here, like this, address of another student. Um, and then this is to illustrate then that now that we have this pointer set up, we can access member functions like we were accessing uh, member variables for the structure here. So um, I probably probably should have given an example of let me let me stop that and and restart. Um, um, so for example, um, um, so remember that the it's not get name name the the name is a private member variable. Now, if it wasn't private, if it was public, even though it was a class, I could do this, fine, that would be legal. Uh, but, but if you try and, and reference that in order to like assign a, a, a variable directly for a private member variable, you'll get an error. Uh, it should be a compile error. So yeah, the, the Visual Studio will, will recognize that um, and you'll get a, an error when you try and compile. So, so you can't do that. But um, if you have member, mem member functions that are public, we can call those using the same um, arrow. Uh, so dereference and then access. So here we're dereferencing and accessing a member function in order to call it. Um, so I'll rebuild um, after I comment that out and we'll, we'll rerun. Uh, so we come down and hit our breakpoint. Um, that wasn't our breakpoint. The next one, there it is. Uh, and let's step over. So there, I, I called set name using my pointer, um, um, and, and we changed the name to, to Joe Schmo. I had the name wrong when I created the variable, so we wanted that. Um, so, and and another example of, of of accessing a member function through a pointer. So we can call the get name accessor to actually get the, the name so we in fact see that in fact the name was changed by calling the setter to Joe Schmo. Um, and um, we can also access um, any public member function like to string to get the string to get our whole thing. So this just shows that all that the constructor was working. So we only changed the name, but the other values came from providing those in the struct the um, the constructor to the class here. Um, okay, so one one other thing before I leave this class here, if, if you were if you were had a good eye, if you were quick when when I brought it up here, so remember uh, in the previous video when I talked about classes, I, I, I mentioned that when you have a member function, uh, let's start with the uh, the set name member function. Um, it's as if there's a uh, implied uh, reference to the object being passed in. So, and in fact, um, uh, that's what happens. So what, what's actually being passed into member functions is a pointer uh, variable. And the pointer variable has the variable name this, okay? So if you see code like this, and, and I used it uh, on purpose in this example so you could see, so this is a pointer to the particular student type class that we called the member function on. So I can use this uh, pointing to name, just like we did uh, uh, um, uh, just a moment ago down in the main function, um, to assign the value. So here, name uh, references, I use the same um, uh, variable name, N-A-M-E, both for the parameter and also for um, the, uh, the, 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 the member variable, okay? So this, this helps disambiguate here. So the, the name of the parameter is name, and then the name of our member variable. We can access our member variable by using this, which points to name. And so assign the parameter into our private member variable. And again, since this function is part of the student type class, it's it's legal to access private um, member variables like this, right? So we can do the assignment of the parameter into the variable. Okay. Um, I use that same thing for the constructor as well. So uh, we, we passed in the parameters with the same names as the, as the private member variables, and, and then we caused the private member variables to be assigned um, by using that this, which points to name and CWID and so on. Um, and same for the getter function and to get the values for the two-string function, okay? So that's what the this uh, parameter is 
in classes in C++. All right. Um, okay, one final quick thing. I've probably gone a little bit longer than I wanted to on this video. So let, let me show you a quick example of um, what we're going to be another thing we're going to be using pointers for in this class to create things like a linked list or more complex data structures. Um, so another thing that if you had a quick eye you might have noticed back to my structure at the top here uh, my structure had four fields but I had a fifth field called next and fit the, the, the next field um, is a self-referential it's a pointer variable but it's a pointer to a student type okay so again, remember this this next holds a memory address, and I can use this to have it hold to create a linked list, basically. So how do we do that? Let's let's show it here real quickly. So um, I already have a student created of student type. So let's create a, a second student called student two, and give him this name and, and campus wide ID, and a third student called student three and give him this name and this campus ID. Now we'll use. this next um, member variable to create a linked list. So my first student that I created up at the top of main here, I will assign the next uh, memory address, the next pointer variable, to be the address of student 2. So we just pointed student 2's next field to be pointing to student 2. Likewise, student 2 next field will point to student 3. Um, and this is common for the end of a linked list. So, so we need to I indicate that we're at the end of our list somehow. So we will use um, a, a value known as the null value. Uh, your textbook talks a little bit about what this is. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll indicate that there's no student three after, there's no student after student three by assigning the next pointer to, to null here. Uh, and then real quickly, here's an example of stepping through. Let me, um, let me get down to this point here. We'll step through these. Um, so here's an example of actually stepping through my linked list. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the, I'll create a, a new pointer variable called pointer to student. Uh, where did we create that? Um, well, somewhere at the top, we created uh, the pointer to student is just a uh, pointer to a student, to a student type. But we'll repoint it back to the first uh, student in our linked list, okay? So the first time through this while loop, a pointer student um, is pointing to the first student, student number one, okay? So if we output the, the first student, I'll just go ahead and step through these here. So the first time through this loop, student number is one here. Uh, and when we call to string on dereferencing pointer student, uh, we get our first student, Jane Programmer. Okay. Now here, then we follow the next pointer uh, to so that uh, we can follow it to our next student. So by by doing this right here, our first student was pointing was pointing to the second student. So we get the address of the neck of the second student, and that becomes what pointer student is pointing to is pointing to the second student. Okay, and then we increment our student number. So the second time through the while loop, student number is two and pointer to student is pointing to student two, the second student here that we gave a name of um, John Jingleheimer. So when we print it out, we see our second student. And then the third time through the loop, we've, we've pointed it to the third student. Um, so we end up outputting our third student here. Now at this point, we're gonna end up assigning null. So the third student, um, um, its next pointer has a null value, so null will get assigned into pointer student. So if we look at pointer student, see it has null or zero there uh, when we did this assignment. So that will end the while loop. Uh, so th this is typical for a, a linked list like this. So, so we're done with the loop. And we, we printed out all three students that we had on this linked list that we created by hand here. Um, Okay, so like I said, I probably went a little bit longer than I wanted to on that video. That's the basics of pointers. Uh, I mean, pointers are a little tough to get your head wrapped around. Um, make certain that you keep in mind um, a pointer holds a memory address, okay? So if you get that, you know, if you, if you can get that into your head about what it's doing, um, um, 
uh, that it holds an address, uh, I, I th it, it, hopefully, I mean, you know, uh, it makes it easier to understand eventually. So uh, work with them, um, and um, um, that's, that's it for this video, um, and I will uh, see you on our next video then.